first little secret I'll reveal is that I grew up going to church pretty much only on Christmas Eve. So if that is true for you, then you are in good company and all kinds of things might happen in your future. Who knows, you may become a pastor. <laughs> but what I do remember as a little kid in service, uh, and we had a service that had a very similar format of lessons and carols for Christmas Eve, except that it was in the evening, was that I would sort of shrink in my seat during the sermon, just hoping it wouldn't be too long. And so one thing that I have learned for Christmas Eve is not to tarry in the pulpit. Usually there's a three-point sermon. I'm going to try to make one point for you today. I'll let you in on the second secret, which is if you're not from here, you may not be familiar with this tradition of pre-Christmas where everyone asks you, what are you doing for Christmas? Meaning, how much money are you spending to travel somewhere luxurious and interesting? It's like a whole thing. It's a status symbol that many people have. And travel for Christmas is just, you know, a wonderful luxury that so many people enjoy. But I am grateful that you have traveled here to church. Now, in that spirit, it's really interesting to consider the Christmas story because it's a story of travel. It's a story where a very poor family had to go from basically one country to another. And when you think of when they say Jesus went from Nazareth, which is in the north, to Judea, which is in the south, and the town of Bethlehem is right next to Jerusalem, that's a trip. We assume that they walked. Uh, we assume that they didn't have significant resources, and we know that because they didn't have anywhere to stay, right? I mean, you don't give birth in a barn just because you want to. So this is a story, you know, it, with that interesting contrast of this isn't a luxurious vacation. This is the Emperor Curinus who gave out a decree that they had to go from one country to another with no resources and they didn't even want to go. I can guarantee you that. Certainly you don't want to be traveling what pregnant woman is allowed to travel at the end of her pregnancy, right? So this was a time of crisis. It was a time of fear. It was a time in which this family was uprooted, uprooted from their homes and had to go to a new place. And the big point that I want to make for you this Christmas is that God took what was a crisis and turn that into the fulfillment of prophecy. And I wanna just offer that as a lesson, not just for the Holy Family in the Holy Land, which we look to now at war, but I also want it to be instructive for all of us as well. God takes these moments of crisis to fulfill whatever prophecy is yet to come true in your lives. And because God loves you so much, because God, throughout the biblical narrative, was always doing these crazy interventions to save God's people, God would show up for Isaac at the altar, God would show up for Joseph in prison. God would show up for everyone who needed him, because, for Hagar. God showed up for everyone because God will go to extreme lengths to connect for, we, with you and show you God's love. And that is the point of Christmas. There is no extent to which God won't go to reach you. You may not be in crisis right now. I hope you're not. But if you do find yourself there, remember the Holy Family. Remember that even in a manger, God would send those who would bring gifts. Remember that God went and made God's self so vulnerable as to be born of woman crying in a barn so that you could know what it means to connect with the one who created you, saves you, 
and holds you fast. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us for this element of worship. We are so grateful that you have entrusted the park with this moment to hear music, to listen to the word of God, whatever it may be. And we just ask for your support. The park only functions with the generous donations of people like you. And 100% of your donation goes to the incredible ministries of this church, which give and give and give again. Thank you for the ways that you give in advance and for all that you might be ready to give in the future. God bless you and amen.